What's up? Jeevan here. Welcome back to another episode. Before I get into it too much, I just want to say this week's episode is all about believing. It's all about learning from others and using the resources around you. And it's about studying the fucking past. <laughs> Junctors, penny stocking, everybody. Uh, I've been profitable around four months now. Uh, this is the fourth month I'm green, made about 260 bucks the other day, and I, I keep on thinking, like, how did I do it? And that's where this theme comes in of learning from others and studying the past. Now, my journey's been crazy. Like, at first, I was like straight in watching all the Sykes lessons and the, the trader checklist DVD and the penny stocking framework DVD. Then I was like, Wow, Mark Crook and all of this stuff on Shorten. And then I was like getting into Gratani and I had a massive Gratani phase. And then I started doing the Steady Trade podcast. So I learned a lot from Tim Bourne. And then when I met Ducks, I was kind of talking to Ducks a bit, but I haven't really, I've learned a bit from Ducks here and there, but not as much, but I know his DVD's coming out. But the point is each person takes you on, took me on a personal journey further. And eventually you do get there. But I've gone through catalog and catalogs on the challenge of watching old ancient webinars. And that's why I'm trying to give the guys who can't afford the challenge these webinars here. And that's what this week's episode is about. Learning from others. This week is Mark Crook and Tim Gratani. Learning from the past. This Tim Gratani webinar is like two years ago because I go that far back to learn from him. And it's also about living the dream. We'll cover that in the last part. I'll see you later. This is uh, Mark Crook building a watch list on his webinar. I know he's done this on the pre-flight checklist, but for the people who are a bit newer, I think it's the most important thing is one, the importance of building a watch list, two, the template that you build it in, but three, how you weigh up the positive and negative indicators and then form a bias on a trade. Floats 10 million. They will be participating in an international trade show in Las Vegas, unveiling a breakthrough technology. So this, this is quite interesting. Uh, smart measuring tape that enables users to perform immediate and accurate smartphone measurements of smooth or rough services. Products intended mainly for the home improvement and do-it-yourself markets. So they, they're obviously presenting their new software, or excuse me, their new product. Uh, let's look at the chart here. Um, you know, it finished at a buck. Was high as a buck twenty six. This has a history of one day spikes. Uh, would not be long this stock overnight. Uh, yes, it might catch a bid. Maybe it maybe it has a follow up spike. But uh, you know, this looks like a fairly recent IPO in two thousand and seventeen, and it's been dead for pretty much the entire year. So we'll say spiked, um, what did it spike? Roughly 60% plus on news of um, product release at CES in Vegas. Yeah, and I, I don't need to go on to, to see what else he's gonna write because I know, but I just wanna show you guys how he weighs things up. Like what's the floor, what's the ticker? But then you've also got to think, what's the two-day chart? What's the two-month chart? How much has it spiked? What's the 10-year chart? What is the news? What is its history of, of holding spikes? And you've got to take all of this into account and weigh it up positive or negatively. So for me, the Tim Grittani webinars are the highlight of the challenge. And I feel like I've learned and gathered more knowledge from the Grittani webinars than probably any other person's webinars. And you get webinars from everyone. Uh, like Bowen, Sykes, God, Crook, and even Docs. Uh, but by far my favorite have been Tim Grittani's, and that's why I've gone back as far as uh, the, the 12th of May 2005. And, and there's always great nuggets of information. The, the, the lessons never get old. 
for example, this classic mistake that a lot of short sellers make that Tim Grittani's learned not to make. I trade PTIE today. I didn't. Um, that was kind of a miss, I guess, because it faded off big. But it was a day one, it was a spike, and I really try to stay away from those for the most part if I don't have a clear resistance level to play off of. So I guess PTIE, the first thing I looked at was the daily chart. And I didn't really see anything on the daily that I that felt like I could play off of his resistance. That's that's where I'd be looking mainly. Um, I guess it did spike pretty well into this area that was its lows back in September. And that's where it died. But I, I don't trust that enough and there was not a lot of volume back then. So it wasn't something that I would have been able to short with any kind of confidence. And then as it went on, it just faded off all day. Um, really too bad that some of them go like this where they have that huge morning spike and then they're just toast afterwards. So I was definitely watching it, um, but I try to just stay away from day ones and avoid a lot of the headache. Uh, um, I mean, how many have we seen where they have this dip down into the 320s and then catch and grind back and go to new high days later? So Oh, I'm not going to play the game on whether this is one that's going to fade off all day or tomorrow. I mean, I'm, but I wouldn't really be counting on it. And I just thought it's very, very interesting how you get these mad short sellers shorting and this stock has even got resistance. And even though it's got overhead resistance, Tim Rattani's still thinking that nah, day one, I'm not shorting it. I don't trust it. What's up, Jeevan? Yeah, and in the background, you'll hear a Noah Gallagher sound. And a lot of people from the US of A, mm -hmm. the ones that are like, five, nine to five. We'll be like, I don't know who Noel Gallagher is. He's, an, he's a guy from a band called Oasis that sang Wonderwall and Live Forever. Noel Gallagher, and it's funny because you'll be like, see, you draw your inspiration a lot from music. Well, I do. He was the best acoustic guitar, one of the best, greatest of the world. And now he's switched to more electronic. He's setting himself a new challenge. And I'm doing that a little bit with high, higher priced stocks now. I'm constantly learning, constantly evolving, not resting on the laurels of thinking, oh, I'm back to back to back to back. Green months. I'm not thinking that. I'm thinking, how can I get even better? How can I get even better? How can I even get, get even better? When I see that studying works, I find out what works best for me and I amplify it. I do it more and more. And that's the fucking key. And eventually it comes. And I just want to say, when I first saw the psych side, I was like, this is bullshit. I didn't want to believe. I didn't want to, I didn't want to dream because... I didn't want to be disappointed when I failed, but something inside of us just said, you'll fucking do it. You'll do it. But I had history with poker, I was successful. So that was implanted in my head from the start. But once you start getting close to profitability, you think, shit, this could be real. And then now that I'm like up a couple of thousand off me lows and green four months consistently, pretty much. For the past four months or the past 30, 60, 90, 120, 120 days, I'm profitable overall by a couple of thousand. Uh, I'm just working back my losses. I've got 2,000 to go. But now I'm thinking, can I really think, fuck the system, fuck corporate life, fuck answering to anyone. Is it true? Can I live and travel wherever I want? Can I? D day by day, I'm being increasingly proven that you can and I'm no exceptional, special person. Any motherfucker can do it. I'm drunk half the time. And uh, it comes always from studying the past, studying what other great people have been doing, putting the work in, literally putting a schedule together and saying, have I done five hours of studying today? When did I go wrong last month? How can I be better this month? It's dead basic once you get used to it. So just comment, learn from others. And I hope you learn from me. And I hope you live the dream. And I hope one day we're in Vietnam on a fucking boat, drinking beer, doing a bit of whatever, living the fucking dream, thinking I have got no motherfucker to answer to. I'll see you later.